Come on, we're going to 1 Samuel. We're going to 1 Samuel chapter 24. 1 Samuel chapter 24. I'm going to read verse number 17. Got to warn you, it's going to be a lot of verses today, and I'm, I'm probably going to be going very fast to try to. I always got more, always got more word than I got time. <laughs> So if you, if you want the scriptures and the points and all that stuff, because we're going to be rapid fire today uh, to all our screen people. Make sure y'all keep up with me back there. I don't want to screen people. Uh, but if you want these verses and, and the points and things of nature, everything that's on the screen, we can email it to you. Just put it in, in the chat and they'll email it to you. Um, you know, ain't no shame in our game. So all the word of God. First Samuel chapter 24, verse 17. One verse of scripture from New Living says, And he said to David, You are a better man than I am. For you have repaid me good for evil. I say amen to the reading of God's word. Today we're in part seven of our After God's Own Heart series. Uh, today from the topic, The Last Dance. The Last Dance. The Last Dance. Father, we thank you for your word. The flower fades, the grass withers, and God, it, we're grateful even for the excitement that's in the room for this word that we are anticipating. <laughs> We ask you, God, to breathe on us now. We ask you, God, to ready our hearts and ready our minds that we might be able to receive your engrafted word, which is able to build us up, which is able to secure us, which is able to encourage us, equip us, empower us. We just simply say, speak to us. Whatever it is you desire to do, um, God, our hearts are ready. Our minds are ready. We pray, God, that our, strignal, our signal be strong. We pray, God, um, that our equipment don't go down. But, God, we need this word to go forth. Man does not live by bread alone, but we live by every word that proceeds out of your mouth. And we're grateful. In Jesus' matchless name, amen. Come on, let's give God some praise and anticipation for the word, for the word of the Lord. You may, you may be seated. You may be seated. The last... The last dance. Go ahead and type that. The last, the last dance. I pray that this this series, um, after God's heart, has been helpful to you as we've been walking through the life of David, and as I told you from the very beginning, um, that we can easily we can easily spend a lot of time talking about the life of David because there are so many different things, so many so many hills, so many valleys, so many mountains. So many things that we can look at from the life of David and we can be able to glean, we can be able to learn, we can be able to put in our spiritual doggy bag. Uh, we began this journey talking about even before the oil was poured on David, before he was ever um, anointed to be the king in waiting, that David was there working, David was there serving and doing what he needed to do. And then we talked about the fact that God had him training. God had him training uh, for where it was that he was going, for what it was that God had prepared for him. There was some training ground. There was something that David needed to do. And this is, the, this is the mindset. This is the heart of the person that has a heart after God's own heart is that we don't wait for opportunities to present themselves. We're already being faithful. We're already being diligent. We're already doing what we need to do before the door ever opens. And David embodied that. David showed us this. Then when David went and fought uh, Goliath, it was no longer training. This was no longer drill. Uh, but we saw David fighting this large, this nine foot nine giant and was doing what he needed to do. To be able to bring victory and bring glory and bring honor to God and to the nation of Israel. And then we, we, we started seeing how David went from, from uh, literally went from obscurity all the way to notoriety. And now we begin seeing how God began to work through David's relationships for David to ultimately begin to start going through the process that God wanted him to go through. And because of David's fame, because of David's notoriety, uh, we start seeing that King Saul had a ton of insecurities and there were some things that he needed to work through and if because he did not work through it David said that I'm only a step away from death that's what he told Saul, so Saul's son Jonathan he said I'm only there's only a step between me and death then we said we got to learn how to watch our step because there are so many people that don't know how to disarm their own insecurities and because of their hatred and because of their jealousy because of all of this it will in turn be it will be 
our demise if we do not handle our relationships properly. If you have not done the due diligence to do what you need to do to make sure that you're right with God, to make sure that God is your source and your strength and you're not intimidated by anyone and anything, then I need to do my due diligence to make sure that I'm sober and I'm vigilant. I think a lot of times we miss this as the people of God, that maybe everybody didn't wake up speaking in tongues this morning. Maybe everybody didn't wake up feeling the power this morning. Maybe everybody didn't wake up reading nine chapters of the Bible. Maybe they maybe they got mad at their wife because they wiped burnt their, their toast. Maybe they got mad at somebody in, in traffic. Maybe they got mad at their husband for not taking out the trash for the ninth day in a row. Uh, you don't know what's going on. Maybe because an individual didn't do their due diligence and make sure their spiritual uh, their spirituality was on point. I need to make sure that my spirituality is on point lest it be, uh, be to my demise. So here because David was a hated man because David was dealing with all of these relationships we unpacked last week that David I believe David said to himself while he was in that cave of Abdullam I got to get myself together I got to get myself together because there are persons that God is sending to me the Bible said everyone that was distressed everyone that was in debt everyone that had a bitter spirit God sent them to David 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 was in the cave running for his own life he was trying to get himself together but yet and still he didn't have time to be on the dock of the bay crying about all the things that was going wrong David had to get himself together and so I've been telling you that this entire series is about relationships and let me remind you one more time that if I'm not careful on how I deal with my relationships if I mismanage and mishandle my relationships I run danger to, from missing my destiny I'm, I'm going to say that again. If I, if I mishandle and misappropriate my relationships, I run danger for missing what God has for me. And I don't know about you, man. I, I, I've been through too much for me to miss anything that God has for me. I want everything that God has for me. I've turned down too much stuff. Oh, for me to miss anything that God. I've, I've tried to be faithful. I've tried to be available. I've tried to be teachable. And I've done all of that here, not by my own strength, not by my might, but by, by the grace of God. And he I don't want to miss anything that God has for me. So I got to learn how to deal with relationships. Such is the case as I borrowed the title from this 10-part documentary that aired earlier this year that also that ultimately talked about the greatest team in NBA history, uh, the said uh, Chicago Bulls. And, 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 there's, and there's no question about that. There's no debate about that. There's nothing to talk about. I'm just telling you what it T-I is. Come on here. When, if I tell you the truth, uh, for an hour every Every week, I'm not going to start lying uh, to you right now. But I'm telling you, that the greatest team in NBA history, uh, the, the Chicago Bulls, the greatest dynasty led by the greatest basketball player that ever lived. I, don't, I know, I understand namesake, Kobe, with a K. Uh, he, he did his thing. I understand the Queen, I mean, King James. I understand all these other individuals. But can I tell you that Jordan did what he needed to do. So in this particular documentary that I just happened to glance at, you know, I, I just happened to be glued to the television and watch every single last one of them and, and then, then recorded it then watched them again you know uh, but, but but don't don't look at me like that because that's how y'all do power that's how y'all do y'all little shows and don't, don't do don't do me like that but I love this particular series this documentary because uh, Phil Jackson who <laughs> arguably the greatest coach of NBA in NBA history walked into the owner's office on in that particular year and the owner told him that in the regular season of basketball to all of my non sports fans they play 80 two games in the season and then he told Phil Jackson if you go 82 and 0 this is still going to be your last season here in Chicago the relationship had become so uh, so distant from Phil and the front office and he said I don't care what goes on within this year this is going to be your last year so Phil Jackson he took that and he called this team together and said we're calling this season the last dance this is the last dance and so what what, what was this season all about it was about really about hear me about managing relationships and personalities. As I've said, you had Michael Jordan on this team, Scotty Pippen who wanted to get paid, Dennis Rodman who didn't know what he wanted to do. He wanted to wrestle. He wanted to go to, he wanted, he, 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 was, he wanted to do this and do all that. It was all about managing personalities. And you know the end of the story, they ultimately did what they needed to do. They ultimately watch me closer. They ultimately got the victory. They ultimately won the championship because here someone knew how to manage 
manage relationships. And can I tell you, such is the case when we look at the life of David in these three chapters. And I'm going to try to squeeze together today. This is literally David's last dance with Saul. Yes, it is. This is his last dance. This is the last song I did right there. Can I tell you, this is literally his last dance with Saul. This is literally the point the where David, because he handles this moment right, because he handles this relationship right, David didn't have to bother with Saul anymore. And can I tell you that God uh, bring all of us to a point the where we can finally get over the hump. We can finally get over to the point where we experience deliverance, where we experience a breakthrough, the where we experience something that where Moses told the people of God, when you come across this Red Sea so you can turn around and this enemy you won't see anymore. I don't know about you. I want to live in such a way that there's some things I don't have to worry about anymore. There's some things that I got the victory over. Sure, we live in a battle. Sure, we live in a, in a space to where we know there's always going to be something. We're going to talk about that. But at the same time, there are certain subject matters. There are certain areas in my life that I need to get a handle on that I'm not perpetually plagued by disobedience or perpetually plagued by something in my heart or in my mind. But I can know that this thing right here is going to be the last dance. I don't know if this is the right word for everybody. I don't know. Maybe I should have tried this on another day. But I'm trying to tell you that anybody that have anything in their life that you're dealing with and if God, if God told you if you get this right, if you pass this test, if you handle this person right, if you handle this relationship right, you don't have to worry about this anymore. I don't know about you. If that was me, i try to sit up on the edge of my heart and say, Lord, speak, speak to me because I, I want this to be I want this to be my last, my last dance. And here Dave, David got to the point to where we start seeing him maturing. We start seeing him developing through his life. And we, and, and we see all of the keys. They give us all the keys, all the components through this narrative, through this story that really show us why this was David's last encounter to Saul in my estimation. The first thing I see when it comes to the life of David, I see a remarkable difference. I see a remarkable difference. We've been, we've been navigating through this dude David's life from a time before we didn't even know who he was in fact before we ever knew his name we saw the oil before we if the text always just talks about a boy always talks about a son but then we saw the oil then we knew his name but here we see a remarkable difference in the life of David David is running for his life last week we talked about the fact that how David how he went to this particular city he lied to the priest and said he was on a mission from the king and because of his lies because of him just acting out because of the the fact that he didn't stop and slow down and see what he needed to do or what God wanted him to do. The Bible says he got the king, he got the priest rather and all of the other priests and all the people of that town got them killed. Then David went to the camp of the Philistines and because he didn't ask God before he went the Bible says he had to start acting crazy in order to get out of this but when I'm looking at the life of David now I see a remarkable difference. What do you mean bro pastor? Look at 1 Samuel chapter 23 verse number 2 says therefore David inquired of the Lord. That, 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 that's a noticeable difference there because here David is, David, David is contemplating going into battle. He's contemplating going into war. But before David goes, before David goes into battle, oh, we see a noticeable difference from a chapter ago that now David is asking God. David, before he just launches out there, he's slowing down and he's talking to God. David is maturing. David is developing as a man man of God and now he's learned that here when I make decisions on my own I get myself in the things that I had no business being in if I would just slow down and stop being so hasty and begin to talk to God begin to pray begin to ask God is this what you want me to do is this the relationship you want me to be in is this what you want me to advance if I will slow down and not be so hasty and talk to God and pray then I will not find myself in situations this is what we learned from David we see a noticeable difference is there anybody other than me the way you jumped out and did some things God knows I have because I'm a go-getter and come on that's probably one of my greatest strengths but it's also one of my greatest my one of my greatest uh, things that hold me down as well and I just go and I just go and I go and I thank God for the Holy Spirit called Camilla Camilla Nesbitt that where she'll lead me and guide me bring all things to my remembrance reprove me and we come on to the Holy Spirit come on here she balances me out and she said mm, I don't know about that now I don't know about that come on every now and then you need somebody in your life saying, mm, 
I don't know about that now. But can I tell you, other than that, I'm grateful for the spirit of God on the inside of me. That it say you need to slow down. Remember what happened last time. Remember you put your mouth on that. Remember what you said you was going to do. Remember what you said what you was where you was going. Oh, anybody just other than me put your foot in your mouth. Anybody other than me had to eat your words because you were hasty. But I learned through, I learned and I learned through the process of time. And David is learning as well that David is saying, God, I got to talk to you before I go. And here, can I tell you, let me drop this on you quick. I know it's early in the message, but here, let me give you a quote. Here, let me, I want you to put this in your spirit. Put this in your doggy bag. Carry it all the week. I want you to remember there's no prayer, no progress. <laughs> Just that simple. No prayer. When, when I don't pray, when I don't consult God, I know that's a, uh, all right, Pastor, we know that. All right, I know. I understand. But can I tell you, just like David, David understood that as well. David knew that as well. But David got hasty and got out of the plan of God and out of the will of God. And he, before he began to make any more moves, and I'm telling you, this is why I believe this is David's last dance with Saul that is recorded. Because David learned how to pray. We'll see it throughout. We'll see it throughout his life. Look at 1 Samuel. 23 and 5 the Bible says and David and his men went to Cahill and fought with the Philistines and brought away their livestock and look because David prayed look at the progress look and struck them was a great blow good God because David inquired of the Lord David said God do you want me to go God said go David said God are you sure you want me to go God said go ahead David later on in this chapter he prayed two more times he said God because he heard that Saul was coming for him these same people that he helped he heard Saul was coming said God when Saul come for me Will they give me over to Saul? God said, yes, they will. First he asked him, he said, God, is Saul coming? He said, yes, he's coming. I don't know about you, but when you take the time to inquire God, I don't know about you, when you take the time to talk to God, God will order your steps. That's not just a pretty song, order your steps, order my steps in your word, dear Lord. No, that's the word of God. Psalm 119, verse 133 says, order my steps in your word, dear Lord. And I don't know about you, Proverbs 3 and 5, we've forgotten about it. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding but in all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path David prayed and David said God I need to know what it is that you want me to do let me hurry lest I run out of time here so we see a remarkable difference I want to ask anybody come on here what, what, what can I tell you maybe what's stopping you from your next place that God has for you maybe just a quick prayer maybe just a quick acknowledgement of the Lord and David has learned this brutal lesson here let me tell you the next thing that I see in the life of David well I believe that this is his last dance with Saul and what we need to do if there's some things we're trying to excommunicate out of our life and be done with we have to learn to resist the temptation of self-isolation here. I see it in the life of David. I, I, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to squeeze three chapters of narrative text into one message. Y'all pray for me. Can I tell you, yeah, David, David, this is probably going to be a part too. I'm just going to preach until my time is up then I'm going to be up out of here. Lord's willing. Can I tell you that here, can I tell you that David, 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 <coughs> David, that ain't wrong. David said, we have to learn to resist the temptation of self-isolation. D- David is running for his life. And look, look at what happens. David is literally a fugitive. And David is a fugitive for double-digit years. I know we, we turn the page real easy. Look at the flick of the I know we can turn we just flick, just flick and turn the page. But no, my friend, that, this is some years that took place. David is a fugitive for double-digit years. So when you're running and whenever it is that persons have wronged you, whenever persons have hurt you, whenever it is that person is jealous of you and you haven't done anything to them, whenever people talk about you and backstab you and betray you just like David has. We have to all resist the temptation of self-isolation. Come on. I know one person said I can do bad all by myself. I don't need nobody around me and some of us because of the pain of people and because our people have mishandled us and mismanaged us, now we push ourselves on the island and we don't do people. And come on, I told you a few weeks ago, some of y'all been cool with this 25 weeks and not coming to the house of the Lord because you saying to yourself on your couch I ain't like none of y'all anyway. Come on here. There's somebody right now watching me on YouTube. I, I, I ain't like none of y'all no way. Talking about, welcome to the, the truth and love. Ain't thinking it's out. And all the people out. Welcome to truth. You got one person. They welcome to truth and love. They all excited. Somebody else on the other side like, 
I ain't gonna, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't tell her, no, no, I ain't gonna say nothing to nobody. I ain't gonna, don't touch me, don't look at me, don't high five me, low five me, don't do nothing. Come on, can I tell you, I, I, I come late and I leave early and I do it on, t- and I do it on purpose. Can I tell you, that, that there are some folk, but here, can I tell you, I understand that we got, I understand we have church here. I understand that people offended us. I understand that we, that our last place, we open up our heart. I know last Christmas, you, you, you open your heart and the very next day, they gave it away. I understand all of that. I know you open your heart perfect every way, but can I tell you that that's not God's perfect design. God has designed us to be in relationship. That's the only way the kingdom can progress. That's the only way the kingdom can work. That's why we're called the body of Christ. Not cousin it, Christ. Come on, not just a hand by the Adams family. No, you need the hand. The hand needs a wrist. The wrist needs an arm. The arm needs a chest. Come on here, the neck bone. Gotta connect to the ankle bone. The ankle, have it go. You know what I'm trying to say? We need the body. I'm telling you, we need the body. You can't do this by your can't do this by yourself. Look, look at the text here, because David had to resist the temptation of being in isolation. Look at first Samuel 20, 23 and 16. It's gonna bless one person. This is your word right here. I promise you this. Look, and Jonathan Saul's son. Now, who is Saul? Saul is David's enemy. Saul is a person that's hunting David. And the Bible says, Saul's son, Jonathan, rose and went to David at Horish and strengthened his hand in God. Look, look at Jonathan. Jonathan went to David. John, Jonathan went to David. Here, last time we saw David and Jonathan, they were in the field. And David and Jonathan came to the grips that said, Saul is not going to stop until he kills David. They made a covenant with one another. And David had to go. And he began his journey as a fugitive. But the Bible says that Saul sought David out and he went and strengthened David's hand let me explain to you what that means look at, look at the same verse of scripture in New Living it said Jonathan went to find David and encouraged him to stay strong in his faith in God good God of mine I'm trying to tell you that every now and then God will assign somebody I told y'all way back then that this is all about relationship and the thing that helped David along the way was the, the person's son that was after him he went after David to encourage him and to tell him to stay strong in the faith stay strong in what it is that you're doing but you can't get this encouragement when you're in isolation you can't get this encouragement whenever it is that you just retract yourself from everybody and detach yourself from everybody saying well I just don't want to open up my heart and I don't want to get hurt no more no my friend man can I tell you that God has some encouragement that can only come through people and you won't get the encouragement that you need you won't get the energy that you need you won't get the push that you need you won't get the nudge that you need whenever it is that you need it because you put yourself on an island but no I'm so glad that God will put people in my life that have helped me oh I know I told y'all the story about the young boy who was scared he wanted to go to the kitchen and get some milk uh, later at night and his, his, his parents say go on in there little Johnny Jr There's that, no, we ain't gonna let nobody get you go on in there God gonna be with you and Johnny Jr got up he started walking to the door and he said you know what I know God with me but I need somebody with some skin on him come on here and come on can I tell you I know I know that God is with me I know he's a man you will I know he's a man you will but every now and then you need somebody with some skin on every now and then you need somebody to pick up the phone and to call you to encourage you to give your word somebody to pray with you somebody to check on you and say hey girl what's going on every now and then you need somebody to say come on boy get yourself together do what it is that God has called you to do and you don't get that when you put yourself in self-isolation you can't have it both ways my friend you can't go into isolation because you don't want your feelings hurt but then when you need to be encouraged you say nobody love me nobody care about me nobody they call me nobody shut up but no you put yourself in isolation i'm preaching already i'm trying to tell you that we got to learn how that we got to learn how to put that out we got to resist the temptation all of us want to sequester all of us want to get to a point that where we say i ain't dealing with nobody all of us want to go in a hole all of us want to go and say i don't want to deal with you get okay come tell you what the old folk told me they say keep on living come on you ain't got your little feelings hurt yet keep on living nobody talked about you yet keep on living you ain't walked in the room and the tension was so hot and the tension was so so thick you can cut it with a knife keep on living all of us get to a point where we say I ain't loving on nobody no more I ain't telling nobody my business no more I ain't giving nobody else my phone number no more I ain't talking to nobody all of us want to push ourselves into isolation but that's not how the kingdom works we got to keep on pushing we got to keep on advancing that's what God has called us to do preach Pastor Kobe I got I'm trying, I'm trying my best here. Look, look what happened. Look what had happened was. Look, look what Jonathan did uh, when he came and saw, saw David. Look at, look at verse 7, 20 through 17. It's going to bless somebody. Look. And he said to him, Jonathan rather, he says to David, do not fear. For the hand of Saul, my father, shall not find you. Look, look at, look at 
Lord. Look at Jonathan and David. Look what he says. You shall be king over Israel. This is the kind of friend I need. This is the kind of friend I need. That, the way he's telling me that I'm going to take his spot. Good God. This is the kind of people I need in my corner. The way they're not jealous and intimidated. But no, they're pushing me into my purpose and my destiny. He said, you're going to be king over Israel. And look what he says. I'm not going to be hating. He, I'm not going to go into isolation. He said, and I shall be next to you. Saul, my father, also knows this. Look at Jonathan. Jonathan came to motivate his friend. Jonathan came to encourage his friend. Came to give energy to his friend. And all of us have to resist that temptation. To go into self-isolation. There's a lot of things that push us there. We, we, get, we begin to develop because we've been hurt. We begin to develop an I don't care attitude. We begin to be angry at everybody. We kind of slip into apathy. We kind of get, well, we, we get real busy. We, we get real busy. People get real busy. That means they don't like slowing down and dealing with things. So you can, you can get real, real busy and just be, oh, they just be working. They just be going and just going to go. No, they don't want to slow down and deal with what needs to be dealt with. People do this all the time in their marriages. They just stay gone all day till they come home the spouse to sleep come on here they ain't got to talk to nobody they ain't got to deal with nothing and no you cannot do that whenever it is you're trying to have a healthy relationship we have to learn how to put those things off because all of us desire love god wired us this way we need love we need significance all of us need security all of us need persons in our life that help us and build us up to show us that love to show us that give us that affirmation to give us that significance to, to, to show that loyalty to us and look at how the devil deals with us we'll never be at the point that where we're at our last dance because we don't like dancing. We don't, we don't even want to get in. We don't even want to do this. Talk about it, which it is a two-step. That's a wall. So, I mean, we don't, we don't even want to. We don't it take. Come on. We don't even want, we don't even want to do it. We, well, I'm good. I just stand right here. I'm good. I'm good. No, you got to know, my friend. You got to get, you got to get in there and dance. You got to get in there and dance on. I know y'all ain't seen that in a minute, but it's still there. I was trying to, I was trying to teach my daughters that. I'm like, what is this y'all be doing? That's too many moves. My God, what is all that? Y'all doing all this stuff? And, and do, I'm like, who, that's the, who choreographed all them, all this stuff y'all doing? This, that, that, and all, they know all of it. They go, dum, 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 dum. they trying to show me. And I'm like, my God. I said, what happened to just this right here? Come on, look how much, look at how much thinking I got to do to do this. I said, come on, baby. I said, take your leg, sweetheart. Take your leg. And I said, twist your leg right here. Do it. She's like, she's like, okay. And I said, okay, take the other leg and twist it like that. And she said, okay. I said, now put them together. Come on. That's called the butterfly. Come on. What's so hard about that? Come on here. Y'all doing all this stuff and doing all this. Like, My God. What is that? That's dancing? I'm good, y'all. I'm sorry. I just, I just helped three. I just built three parents just now. Helped three parents. <laughs> Feel that right over in there. <laughs> Jesus Christ. So I got, I got to resist the temptation of trying to learn them dances. So look, <laughs> David, David, what, what, what pushes us? And I'm going to slow down here and minister here and then I'm, I'm going to speed back up. Because, because there are so many things that stop us in our relationships. The first thing is fearing vulnerability. That's why we don't get close to people. We don't, we don't like being vulnerable. We, we, don't, we don't like being vulnerable. We don't like exposing ourselves because we've been taught you always put your best foot forward. Y'all, we've always been taught you never let them see your sweat. But here God puts somebody in your life the way they see your sweat. Even when you don't sweat, when you're not physically sweating, they still can pick up your perspiring. Yes, sir. That's God to put people in your life the way we don't we don't want that. We don't want people. We want we gonna feel like we're gonna feel like we're gonna lose control. We're gonna feel like we're gonna lose our dependence on somebody. I no, no, I want I don't like being vulnerable. So we so the enemy it keeps us away from each other number two look what else happens we we evade personal disclosure how you doing oh i'm good i'm blessed and highly favored how you doing oh too blessed to be stressed oh how you doing all oh, things are working together for my good and, and we don't never we so we don't never and, and i'm not telling you just to be barfing on everybody all your trouble and all your problems somebody uh, literally somebody just literally just asking how you doing but there ought to be somebody in your life the way you can disclose there ought to be somebody in your life the way you can be able to say you know what man I, i'm in a, i'm in a season of temptation right now you know what i'm in a season of anger you know what i haven't been praying the way i need to pray you know what i'm dealing with some things mentally i'm dealing with some things emotionally there ought to be somebody in your life but when you're in self isolation you don't have that help you don't get that luxury you know what else? We avoid risk. We don't like taking these type of risks because we're like, well, no, I'm not, I'm not finna, I'm not finna open myself up like that. 
Not finna. I, I, because once again, we've had these several bad relationships because whether it was on the individual or both of us, the way we mismanage one another. So we don't want to open ourselves up, but we're robbing ourselves of the love and the freedom that God has given us. The last thing is this. We, rem we remember again, we're remembering past rejection. Come on, you open yourself up to someone. Anybody? Come on. I know I've been hurt. I know I've been in friendship. I know I've shown people the ropes and they've taken those same ropes and hung me with them. I, I know I've sat down and I poured into people and, I, and I've helped people and I've been there for them. I've been Johnny on the spot, do what I need to do, and then they'll still just walk right out of your life. Or, or, and then when they walk in, they make you be the, be the victim or be the villain when they're walking out. You're trying to figure out, well, what did I do? And then so I've had to mature and say, what did I do? And now don't hold, don't hold the new person or the next person hostage because of how the last person did me. And we, we don't, we don't, we, we rob ourselves of this, this, uh, this, this fruitfulness, this, this, this vigor, this, this anointing that God wants when it comes to relationships. And this is why the body of Christ is stagnant, to be honest with you. We don't, we don't, we, we don't have, we're not no short, we're not short on, on preaching the word of God. We're not short when it comes to prayer. We're not short when it comes to being faithful and doing all the things we're supposed to do. But when the enemy stops us, the body of Christ as a whole, it stops us in our relationships. Because this thing right here has taught us that I can do, I can do life with, I can do life with you, with you without being with you. <laughs> I can be, I can be engaged with you and not really be involved with you. <laughs> and here, this is why the kingdom, this is why the kingdom of God, because we we still teaching the word. Come on, what's the problem? We still teaching the word. We still preaching. We still praying. We still doing all the things that we need to do and working and flowing and all the gifts of the spirit. But it's got to be our relationship. If we don't get our relationships tight, then we'll just keep on being stagnant. But I love what the Ecclesiastical writer said. Who was Solomon? Said in Ecclesiastes 4 and 9. Look what it says. Two are better than one. Yes, sir. Because they have a good reward for their toil. Verse 10. He says, for if they fall, one will do what? Lift up his fellow. Oh, but one, but, but woe, 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 woe to him who is alone. When he falls, he will not have no one to lift him up. Maybe you're still in that pit. Oh, because you didn't have nobody to lift you up. Maybe you're still dealing with depression because you didn't have nobody to pick you up. Maybe you never got over what you're supposed to get over 5, 10, 20 years ago because you won't let nobody in to come pick you up. Look at David. Look at the maturity of David. His daddy, the daddy of his friend is trying to kill him. Our immaturity will say, well, if you was really my friend, you would just leave your daddy. You wouldn't even be, you wouldn't say, how you gonna mute you? You must be with him then. If you, you stand with him and you still there. Come on here. Like, like I got to treat you. I got to treat you the way somebody else treating you. I can't stand that. Just because they mad at you and they, because y'all two don't like each other. It don't mean I can't be your friend and be your friend. I don't got nothing to do with that. Come on here. You call me a comma, 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 chameleon. Call me a chameleon all you want to. You call me a turncoat. Call me Uncle Tom. Call me a brown or come whatever you want. If that's because y'all got a problem, I'm good. Come on here. I know how to have be friends with people who are bitter enemies and I'm not dogging you out when I'm talking to him. I'm not dogging you out when I'm talking to him. I don't got nothing to do with all mess. Come on here. I'm just here. I'm just here. I'm just here for the comments. Can I tell you? Get the book. <coughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> oh boy. It's a good word right here. I'm enjoying this my I'm enjoying this myself. This is the last dance. And look, let me tell you what else. I'm, I'm, am I doing all right, child? Am I doing okay? Am I just whistling the Dixie today? I think I'm just whistling. Let me tell you well. Let me tell you what, how how how. Oh, this is gonna help somebody. This is gonna help somebody right here. Look. You know how you know how how I know that this is David's last dance was what's all and we can do the same when we realize that there will always be an antagonist. We we, we gotta get this. We, we gotta get this. We we're looking for a life that when I pray, when I worship, when I give, when I soul win, everybody's just gonna love me. Everybody's just gonna receive me. Everybody's just gonna when I walk in the room, that's gonna give me a Stand an ovation because, because I do right, because I serve and I love God. We feel like there's going to be a life where I won't have no antagonist. But my friend, let me, let me tell you, let me, let me tell you that there's always going to be an antagonist. Look, look, look how it plays out in David's life. First Samuel 23, 25. Look, look. And Saul and his men went to seek him. And David was told, so he went down to the rock and lived in the wilderness of Moan. 
And when Saul heard that, look, he pursued after David in the wilderness of Moan. Look, verse 26 says, and Saul went on one side of the mountain and David and his men on the other side of the mountain. And David was hurrying to get away from Saul and Saul and his men were closing in on David and his men to capture them. Verse 27, and the messenger came to Saul saying, hurry and come. The Philistines have made raid against the land. Verse 28 says, so Saul returned from pursuing after David and went again to the Philistines. Therefore, the place was called the rock of escape you missed it david is out there a fugitive and every time and every time saul pursued david watch the enemy it was someone who came and told saul somebody came and told saul you'll see it read it when you get a chance i can't i can't, I can't do the whole bible now y'all gotta, gotta do something come on read 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 verse 23 chapter 23 chapter 24 chapter 25 chapter 26 and you'll see that every time saul is minding his own business and somebody will come and say do you know david over there you know david over there and that's just how the enemy worked here saul was minding his own business but somebody came and told saul where david was and this began to incite the anger he pursued after david and here the text just told us that saul almost caught david david was on one side of the mountain Saul was on the other side and they going around and around on the mountain and here God sent somebody to come tell Saul that there was a, that the people of God had been attacked back in Israel and that made Saul stop pursuing after David if, if that had not been the case he would have captured David that day and look at this verse of scripture right here in 1st Samuel 23 14 I think this will resonate with somebody the Bible said and Saul sought him every day Saul sought him every day. It was his heart's desire. It was his motivation to see David destroyed. And every now and then, the, the spirit of the enemy will jump on somebody. And it will be their M.O. It will be the way they do their life. The way they want to see your demise. They want to see you fall. They want to see you down. Come on here. I know I tell you all the time you're not that important. But every now and then, and for your growth and your development, God will put somebody in your life to be your antagonist. And every day they'll pursue you every day everything you say they'll take it and twist it everything you do they'll say oh they just did this because of that they'll nitpick everything they nitpick your every comment they nitpick your every post they nitpick your every this and your that and every day somebody would antagonize you and be breathing you you can feel the heat of their of their breath on your neck because they're after you oh but don't forget what the bible said the bible said but god did not give him into his hand good god y'all missed it oh the saul was pursuing david saul Saul wanted to destroy David, but the Bible said, but God did not give him into his hand. And that's what I come to tell you, beloved. There's always going to be an antagonist. There's always some going to be somebody who don't like you. Your hair going to be too long. Your hair going to be too short. Come on, you're going to be too light. You're going to be too brown. You're going to be too this. You're going to be too that. You're going to be too skinny. You're going to be too thick. Come on, it's always going to be somebody got something to say. Oh, but the good news is that God will not let them capture you. God will not give you into their hand. Oh, come on here. I heard her sing the song that no weapon that's formed against me will be able to prosper don't let people stop you because they're pursuing you don't let people stop you because they're talking about you don't let people stop you because they got it in for you i don't care if you block me i don't care if you ignore me i don't care if you cancel me out of your life i got to keep on doing what god has called me to do oh come on here somebody i'm coming to encourage somebody and come and let you know there's always gonna be somebody after you we always got a real devil and we always got somebody in our life that the lord allowed to be there just to keep us honest and god I want to know do you love me enough or you care about their opinion do you love me to keep on going or you care about what they say about you do you love me enough or are you going to allow what it is that they do and what they say and what they don't do and what they don't say to call you to stop oh but i come to tell you don't stop till you get it get it i come to tell you to keep on pushing keep on pressing keep on being what god has called you to be and tell them bye 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 talk to the hand i mean last time y'all heard that the faces don't understand there's always going to be an antagonist. I just, I just blessed like two people on the website. There's always going to be an antagonist. Stop looking for a life where there's no antagonist. There's always going to be somebody. If, let, me, let me say it. If you're doing something of value. Amen. If you're doing something of substance. Now, if you ain't making no noise. But if you're doing something, there's always going to be somebody saying something. There's somebody probably saying something right now. Look at him. Look at him. Who are you talking to? Who do you think he's talking to? It's always going to be somebody. It's fine. And I understand that because it's a real world. And we got to do what we need to do because God has commissioned us to do it. If you stop because of people, you're never going to go. You catch that on Tuesday. Look, let me tell you. Let me tell you how this is going to be the last day. 
oh boy, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I've covered a lot more ground than I thought I was gonna be able to cover. I like literally sent them like like four chapters of verses, and I'm, I'm like I'm like I'm like kind of doing okay now, but I can't get I can't get cocky because I'm I'm gonna get stuck. So let me keep going here. I'm still depending. I'm leaning on the everlasting arm. Look, let me tell you. Let me tell you what else. You know how this last dance? Two people gonna catch this. When I'm regal in my reflexes. I'm not talking about the movie theater, though. <laughs> it's like, I don't know, I'm an AMC kind of girl. No, I'm not talking about the movie theater. Look, when, when, I, when I'm regal <laughs> in my reflexes, you'll, you'll see it. Look at, look at 1 Samuel 24, 2. Look what it says. Then Saul took 3,000 chosen men. How many men? 3,000. David only has 600 men. He has 600 men. Look at the, ooh, this is so powerful. Look at the kind of influence God gave David. He's a fugitive. And 600 people have come to join and say, I'm with him. But here Saul is a king. He got 3,000 people coming to pursue and coming after David. The Bible says 3,000 chosen men out of all of Israel went to see David and his men in front of the wild goat's rock. Verse 3 says, and he came to the sheepfold by the way where there was a cave and Saul went in to relieve himself. Now David and his men was sitting in the innermost parts of the cave. David is a fugitive. Who is David running from? He's running from Saul. These caves, I told y'all last week, I don't know if you called it or not, I told you this, some of these caves were so deep and so wide. There was a, um, the theologians say that there's some of them are as large as basketball courts. They're very deep. And you know the caves are dark, they're dangerous, and they're damp. You don't know what's in the cave. And his Saul came in the cave. He's literally hunting David. And he comes in the same cave that David and his men are hiding in. Saul comes in. He thinks he's alone. He can't see David. But David can see him. And, and, and the, Bible said, the Bible says he came in to relieve himself. The Bible says he came to relieve himself. That, that, that simply means he came to use the restroom is what, is what it is. It, it said to cover his feet and all that. You know, he came to use the restroom. So my point is Saul is in a very vulnerable position. Saul is the king. And he's pursuing David like David is the future. David didn't do anything to him. But you know how? I believe that God finally let David get over this hump with Saul because David was regal in his reflexes. What, what is regal? Regal means relating to or suitable for a king. This is how a king would carry themselves. Jesus. Saul got the position. But David got the character. <laughs> Saul is the king, but he's acting like he's a fugitive. He's acting like he like God don't like he don't know God, like God didn't choose him and help him. But here David is the one that don't have the position, but he got the character. Lord, I could park here for a moment. I can preach on that for a minute. Because there are some of us that want position. There are some of us that want platforms. There's some of us that want to go to the nation and do all this stuff. But we lack the character. You may have the skill, you may have the talent, you may have the ability, you may even have the anointing, my friend. Oh, but whenever you don't have the character. When your character don't match your, your, your condition, when your character don't match your position, when your character don't match where it is you're trying to go, your character will expose you. And here, here David, David was acting very regal in his responses because here, here his Saul came to relieve himself. He literally came, he's in a vulnerable position. But look at what David did. David did not take advantage of Saul. If some of us was in that spot, we would have we lost that. He was like, look at God. Oh, he's been chasing me all this time. And he you believe this? He can't even see you. Look at God. No weapon. We get real deep. Formed against me as we going over there to take him out. And let's say, look at God. But look, look at what this great man of God said. I got to invite him every now and then. Look what he said. Whether God exposes a person or a person exposes themselves, it's not for revenge, but it's for me to exercise restraint. <laughs> Saul is in a vulnerable position. And, and David, in our accounts, if they were sitting across us, we'll say, David, oh, you, you in all your rights. God did that. Out of all the caves, he sent Saul in this particular cave. And here, he's in, he don't see you. You are in all your rights to get him back. What they said to you now? Mm, no, man. you got to do what you need to do. You got you to be a man, David. 
You gotta be a, I wouldn't let nobody do me like that. Oh, y'all don't know, talk to me. Y'all don't, y'all don't have conversations with people. Can I, can I tell you, but David, well, well, and I want, I want to say this to all of my internet people, all my people that just love mess and just love stuff. All of them, I don't even want to say their names. I don't want to give them fuel and give them fire, but I'm going to say one name. All of my Larry Lee, Reed, lover, lover, all lovers, and all of my, all of my bloggers, and all of my, uh, everything going down, but the word, I can't remember the other individual name. What, what his name? Who? I'm not Mr. Obnoxious. I don't know how you know Mr. Obnoxious and all, all these people, all these people that, that make a living out of exposing people. Can I tell you that that is the spirit of the devil? Oh, come on. I'm just going to, because we love it. I got to say this to the people of God. Come on. I got to say this to the people I cover. Now, don't you go digging nothing up on me, Mr. Larry, because I'm going I'm to send you an offering. Can I tell you, can I tell you that here? I ain't, Mr. I ain't got nothing to love for. I'm just trying to cover my little people here. Can I tell you that here? That's something, <laughs> that's something to wear. That's the spirit of the enemy. The way I just love. Love hearing mass and love hearing about what this preacher got caught up in doing, what this person did, and what that. Did. No, we don't share that. Come on, we don't expose. If God allow, put that quote back up for me. If God allows someone to be exposed, whether they expose themselves or whether God does it, it's not for me to reveal. Oh, that's a different type of temptation. When somebody been cruel to you, when somebody dogged you out, when somebody talked about you, we say stuff like this. Mm, God don't like ugly. I guess, I guess what goes around comes around. Oh, here you riding down the street, somebody dogged you. Out and you right now street and you see them pull over broke down. What you gonna do? Are you go? Some of us so gangsters, so goon, we'll pull back around, blow the horn, and say, Deuce, it. we'll roll the window down. <laughs> don't even act like we're trying to help them. But that's not the spirit of God. We don't expose people, we don't kick people when they're down. But nobody gotta learn how to cover somebody. Oh, that's what got Noah boys in trouble. One brother, one brother went in there and saw his father drunk. He was bucket naked and was drunk. And he said, Hey, y'all, come look at my dad. Look at what Moses doing. He over here, bucket naked and drunk. And the Bible says that the other the brother did not expose him to Moses. They just, Noah rather, they just took the cover and they covered him up instead of exposing. I want to know who are you covering? Are you always trying to pull the cover off people? You always trying to say, mm, what about this? And mm, what about that? Can I tell you that's the spirit of the devil because the devil is the end. The devil is the accuser of the brethren. The devil wants us nothing more to be exposed to where our light will be not be shining. It'll put out our salt, put out our fire. Oh, I'm preaching the word, my friend. I know y'all don't like the page. Y'all don't subscribe to him. I know y'all get the newsletter but can I tell you as a people of God we shouldn't touch people whenever it is they're going through you know why because it's going to be your time one day what happened when somebody sent a screenshot of you hello hello hey hello what, what happened when you the screenshot it's all fine and then when somebody else the screenshot girl look at this let me get out of here y'all didn't like this right here y'all I said oh my god I'm out of here share before you go and I say, share before you go. Look, let me tell you what happened. So, so Saul is vulnerable, and God will, I believe God did this to test the character of David. Because God will let people be in a very vulnerable position in front of us. And what will we do? Will we take advantage of them? Will we take advantage of their vulnerabilities? Or will we cover them? There, there are people that have come back around who dogged you out, and they need something from you. What you going to do? You're going you to dangle in their face. We talked about this last week. Why David had to get himself together. Here his family came to the cave. His daddy was the one that even, he wasn't even, if it was up to his daddy, he would never even been king because the daddy left him out there with the sheep. His brothers, when he came to fight Goliath, his brother said, you just came out here just to see the battle. And now they came to David. What, was David mature enough to say, oh, now y'all, now y'all want me to help? Y'all, 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 y'all missing me, but I know this is it's going to sound real good on the radio. I promise you, I'm going to cut my volume up right there. Look, let me tell you, let me tell you the next thing. The next thing, what we ought to do, is get, get, get good. And I'm hurrying. We have to learn, if you want this to be the last dance, we have to learn how to repel pseudo-spiritual counsel. I right learn to repel pseudo-spiritual counsel. We, we have to learn this. Look, look, look. Saul is in the cave. Who is, who is Saul seeking after? David, trying to kill David. Come on, y'all, the smart class. Look at verse 4. And the men of David said to him, Here was the day of which the Lord, Abisha, which the Lord, he by David. Which Lord, who he ba 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 ba. This is the day. This is the day. The Lord is he. This is the day. Behold, who I will kill your enemy to your hand. I can see him quicken in the cave, and you shall do to him as shall be good to you. Look, they hyping David up and using the name of the Lord. Come on, 
y'all don't, don't got no deep friends. Y'all don't, no, don't got no people that, that are super spiritual. You, you don't got no people in your life that counsel you based off their spirituality. And they're quick to tell you what the Lord say. You better learn how to learn how to decipher through what God is speaking to you or not. <clears throat> Because people will take the name of the Lord. People will take, I got a word of knowledge, I got a word of wisdom, got something I need to say to you. And they will they'll base what it is that they're saying based off the information that they have or based off of what they would do if they were in the situation. And here they talking about, they telling David, this is what God said. I don't see nowhere in the text that God told David this. But now they're in the cave talking about what the Lord is saying. Well, we got to learn, if you want this to be the last dance, they got their well intent. I know they had well intentions to help David. But this is not what God called David to do. And we got to be careful having people tonight. That's why you can't be eating from everybody at the table. I know you like, I know you like listening to this person, listening to that person, and all that. You better, keep, better be careful listening to all these people. These people will steer you wrong and have you going down a path. If I were to listen to people, even right now, if I were to listen to people about what I should be doing and what the Lord, what direction we ought to be taking the ministry and how we ought to be doing this and how we ought to be doing this. Oh, I'd be so messed up. If I talk to 10 different people, I'm going to get 10 different opinions. I got this person want me to be a part of this. This person want me to be a part of that. They want me in this organization. Want me to go over here. Want me to do this. Want me to do this. Want me to do this. I don't got time to be listening to what, 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 that may be God's will, but that may not be God's will for me. That may be a good thing that you're doing, and I'm, I'm going to celebrate you. I'm going to push you, but just because you're doing it don't mean I got to be doing it, and because I don't want to do it, that don't mean I'm, I'm against God, and I'm not, and I'm missing the mark. You do what God called you to do, and I'm going to do what God called me to do. You, oh, y'all, 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 y'all don't, y'all okay. Y'all, y'all think me later. Y'all think me later. The Bible said David got up, put the verse back up for me. Then David arose stealthily and cut off the corner of Saul's robe. So, so, so the pseudo spirituality, false pseudo, false, the, the false spirituality, it, it kind of nudged David to move. But he didn't go all the way. He didn't go all the way. But look, look what he did. The Bible says he cut off part of his robe. And, and, and the Bible says when he, when he cut off part of his robe, look at verse 5. It says afterward David's heart struck him. Because he cut off the corner of Saul's robe. What is heart shrewd? Look what the, magic, the, the message says. It says immediately he felt guilty. David got pumped up. No, we, we, let me be careful letting people pump you up. David got pumped up and God convicted him. Because it was not a big deal. He didn't kill him. It says God. To cut a king's robe is to cut his authority. Amen. To cut a king's robe. It's to cut and to say that what no, was no longer yours. Y'all don't believe me. Y'all think I'm making this up. Remember when Saul was talking to Samuel the prophet in chapter 15, verse 28. Look what it says. And Samuel said to him, when, 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 when here, it is, here it is, Samuel was trying to talk to Saul. And Sam, Saul was trying to talk to Samuel rather by what he messed up. And Samuel began to walk off. And he grabbed Samuel's robe and they ripped his robe. And look what Samuel said to him. The Lord has torn the kingdom of Israel from this day. It was a symbolic. It was symbolism saying you tore my the prophet's garb you tore my robe and God is tearing the kingdom so what David was doing David was cutting it and taking matters into his own hand and God convicted David and said you sitting up here cutting the kingdom is not for you to cut the kingdom is not for you to take into your hand I'm the one chose you I'm the one called you I'm the one told you to do what it is that you're doing you don't let people hype you up and push you up whatever it is that I have for you I'm going to give it to you oh come on I'm talking to somebody right now they want to undercut somebody I want to talk to somebody right now. I want to take advantage of a system or take advantage of somebody and trying to take it yourself. You don't take nothing yourself. What God has for you, it'll come your way. Stop cutting people with your mouth. Stop cutting people with your eyes. Stop cutting people with your conversation and get able to take what it is that God has for you. It's not for you to take it because if you take it yourself, you're going to have to, man, you have to, man, you have to maintain it. If you take it yourself, you got to maintain it. But God said, if I give it to you, I'm the one that's going to secure you. That's some good stuff there, bro, Pastor. Let me get out of here. Oh, man. <laughs> That's some good stuff. Let me keep going. It's okay. I enjoy it. Look, I said, next thing we have to learn how to do, we want to be last dance. I got to hurry. We have to learn to repel. That's not the only counsel David got. Because this happens again. It happened again later in chapter 26. That's why I got to read chapter 23, 24, 25, 26. Look, we got to repel even carnal counsel. It's not the first time David got this advice. Because look, 1 Samuel 26 and 2. Is anybody getting anything out of this? Oh, I'm messing up. I'm messing up today. Look, okay, look what it says. So, so Saul arose and went to the wilderness of Ziph. With three, how many? 3,000 chosen men of Israel to seek David in the wilderness of Ziph. Verse 5. 
Then David rose and came to the place where Saul had encamped. And David saw the place where Saul lied. And with Abner, the son of Ner, and the commander of his army, Saul was lying within the encampment while the army was encamped around him. So here, David catch wind that Saul is coming for him again. And now the only difference between the story in chapter 24 and the, chapter in the story in chapter 26 is, is that David was just in the cave, mind his own business, and Saul came and came into the cave that he was. Now in chapter 6, it happens again. But here, here Saul is pursuing David And David decides to go to where Saul is Now Saul is encamped They got all of his men 3,000 men are encamped about him Verse 6 says Then David said to Abimelech Ahimelech the, the Hattite And, and Jacob's brother Abishai The son of Zur who He said who will go down with me Into the camp to Saul And Abishai said I'll go down with you Abishai was a ride or die Abishai said I'll go with you I'm going to go Come on you Let's go let's go Look look what it says Verse 7 says So David and Abishai went to the army went to the army by night and there lay Saul sleeping within the encampment with his spear stuck in the ground at his head and Abner and the army lay around him here Saul is pursuing David David hears he goes to the camp that Saul lives and everybody sleep and they see Saul with his spear the same spear that Saul took and threw it and tried to pin David against the wall several times. That same spear is stuck next to Saul. And look, here, here's the carnal counsel. Look at it. Verse, verse 8 says, Then Abishai said to David, 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 God has given your enemy into your hand. Now please, let me pin him to the earth with one stroke of the spear. I will not strike twice. David, you don't even got to do it. I'll do it. I know you don't want to touch God's anointing. I'll do it. I know, I know you don't, I know you don't want, you don't gotta, you gotta run your car. Just let me put it here, just hold this money for me. You don't gotta do it. Just, just, you, you don't gotta do nothing, just stand there. Come on here, y'all ain't gonna talk to me. Let's, let's get in the car, come on, let's ride with me. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me, y'all don't know how to, I guess y'all flesh don't talk to y'all. Just, just stand still, you don't gotta do that. And say, y'all look, like, can I tell you, here, this is what, this is what Saul, Saul is asleep. And here David is there, Abishai's whispering to him. He's not saying David, he, he threw God's name in, but this is more carnal. He said, let's kill him right now. I'll do it, I promise you, I won't hit him. Oh, some of us got some family right now. Come on, I tell you, some of us got some family that all we got to do is give them a nod give them a wink and come on they'll take some matters in their own hand that's why I say that people tell me we're going we're gonna to come up there we're going to come up there and get you pastor you talking all that we're going to come up there and come on we got to come on up here ministry come on we got some folks you come on up here come on I got some brothers that ain't out they ain't, they ain't, they ain't baptized in the Holy Ghost just yet I got some brothers that are waiting to hit somebody I got some brothers that are waiting to square somebody else so you come on you come on so here all, they're, they're, you ought to be glad that some of us hadn't sent some of our friends and our family over there so come on y'all go help me here people just sit there and just act that ill. Oh, they come up against you or you feel like just because you're saved, you ain't gonna do nothing. We got to resist the enemy even in that and saying just because we don't put our hand on it, because we don't sign our name to it, we feel like we're absolved of it. Oh, but no, my friend, God said no, you got, you got, you got good intention. They want to look after you, but this counsel is from the flesh. You do not take matters into your own hand. You don't even be involved in it even when people are pushing you trying to tell you to do it. Oh, my friend, let me let y'all go. Y'all getting tired of your boy. My God, I thought this was good when I was putting it together. I'm trying to tell you that God wants us to get so to the point that we'll be able to learn how to let God deal with things. And I believe this is why David, this was his last dance, because David learned how to release it on God. So David said, no, I'm not going to do this. Look what he says in verse 9. But, he, but David said to Abishai, do not destroy him. For who can put out his hand against the Lord's anointed and be guiltless? Verse 10 said, and David said, as the Lord lives. Look what David, look at his maturity. He says, as the Lord lives, the Lord will strike him. Or his day will come to die. Or he will go down in the battle and perish. David said, I'm going to put it in God's hand. I know that David is coming after me. I'm not going to let Saul off the hook. I'm going to take him off my hook and put him on God's hook. Well, that's when I'm I'm going to grow. That's when I develop, when I got to stop taking matters into my own hand and let God fight my battle. Let God take care of my enemy. Let God take care of my haters. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to let God do it. Look what Paul said in Romans 12, 19. He said, Dear friend, never take revenge. Leave that to the righteous anger of God. For the scriptures say, I will take revenge. I will pay them back, says the Lord. Somebody just can't let stuff go. You got to call them back. You got to text them back. You got to email them back. You got to go around there. You got 
back to say what you said again. Now say it in my face. God said, leave that mess alone. God said, I'll fight your battle. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. You trying to get them back. And God said, I'll take care of it if you'll move out of the way. Oh, I love what Michelle Obama said. She said, when they go low, she said, you ought to learn how to go high. Come on, I'm trying to talk to somebody right here that got the Holy Spirit of God. That know that God got a purpose. That God got a plan. God got a promise over your life. And I'm not going to let nobody pull me out of character. Just because you coming after me. No, I'm going to let God fight my battle. Somebody will say, preach, Pastor Kirby. Let me get out of here. Oh, I got to get out of here. Let me get, no, let me get out of here. Let me get, let me go. Let me go. This happened twice. This happened twice. First time, maybe it was a quinky dink. Before it happened again, we would say, look at God. But no, David was consistent. That's what I believe God is calling for us to be and to do is to be consistent in our lives and our heart. The way just because, here it is, just because you got the victory one time, that doesn't mean it is not coming back in. That because I said this your last dance. See, this is, this is the last dance with Saul. But there's going to be some other people coming after David in his name of his son, in the name of his partner, his counselor, his familiar friend, going to betray him. This is the last dance with Saul, but it's always going to be an antagonist. Oh, and what is God trying to tell us today? That we got to learn how to be consistent. We got to learn how to maintain our character and learn how to continue to do what God has called us to do. I love what John Maxwell said when they asked him and said, what's your greatest leadership thing that you take out of your whole life, your leadership life all these years? of being a leader. John Maxwell said never underestimate the power of compound consistency. Oh, come on here. People may not like you but when you're consistent, they can't do nothing with you. People may try to stop you but when you're consistent, when you keep on loving, you keep on serving, you keep on forgiving, you keep on praying, they can't stop you when you're consistent. You may not be the most talented but be consistent. You may not be the most anointed but be consistent. You may not be on the lips of the people but be consistent and God will breathe on your consistency. Oh, David said in Psalm 1 5 verse 15 oh look what he says saying touch not my anointed one and do my prophets no harm that's what God is calling us to do stop trying to get people back stop trying to expose people and leave God's people alone let God deal with that if God if they mess up that's between them and God if they go out and do that that's between them and God David said touch not God's anointed oh here look what Jesus said in Matthew 5 11 blessed are those who who revile you he said blessed are you when others revile you and when they persecute you and 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 all other and, and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Jesus said you're blessed when they lie on you. Jesus said that you're blessed whenever it is they come up against you. Jesus said stop allowing what people say stop you in your track. Jesus said rather you're blessed. Verse 12 said rejoice and be glad for your reward is great in heaven. He said for so they persecute the prophets so they are persecuted but they're going to persecute you. Jesus said they kill me and they're going to kill you. Stop allowing what people do to affect you. Oh Peter said in first Peter 414 he said if you are insulted in the name of Christ he said you are blessed because the spirit of glory and God rests upon you and that's what I'm saying oh when people come up against me I'm saying God let your presence come upon me that's what when people come to afflict me I'm saying God send me your presence because in your presence there's fullness of joy at your right hand there's pleasures evermore oh come on here somebody I love the fact that David did what he needed to do and not only did David not take matters in his own hand not only only did David put Saul, take him off of his hook and put him on God's hook. Oh, David understood. This needs to be my last dance. So I'm going to take the initiative to reconcile. Oh, I know about 10 of y'all going to get off the boat. So I ain't going to say nothing of that joke. I'm not going to try to reconcile. Here, both times when Saul came in the cave, David waited for Saul to go and say, Saul, I'm your son. I didn't do anything to you. The Bible says he bowed down and he said, I didn't do anything to you. Stop hunting me like a dog. The second time he cut, when he, when he was in, this, in, the, in, the, in the camp, when, when he went to the camp, he took his spear, took the water and woke him up and said, I didn't do anything to you. Please leave me alone. I love the fact that David just didn't stay there. But no, David said, oh, I need you to reconcile with me. I'm trying to let bygones be bygone. I know I'm talking about three people right now. Y'all can just keep on looking at me straight and act like I ain't saying nothing. But I know there's somebody right now that's antagonizing you. There's somebody that's been a thorn in your flesh for years and you just avoid them like the plague. You avoid them talking about social distancing. You've been social distancing a long time with that individual. Oh, but God is challenging you today. The way you need to reconcile, at least get it off of you and say, if you got a problem with me, that's your problem. But here, I don't got nothing wrong. I don't got, I'm not, I'm not carrying nothing in my heart. I let it go. I let it go. Somebody say let it go. 
That's what I'm going to do with this message. I'm going to let it go. I'm going to let it go. It's the it's last dance. And, and this is David's last dance with Saul. I believe it's his last dance because we see a remarkable difference. We see David resisting the temptation of self-isolation. When we realize that there's always going to be an antagonist, we got to be regal in our reflexes, repel pseudo-spiritual pseudo counsel and carnal counsel. I got to release it and put it on God. So I got to, I got to make sure that when I, I got to take the initiative to reconcile, I believe it's David's last dance because David understood we reap what you sow. You reap what you sow. I, I know, I know y'all want something deep, something didactic, but I'm trying to tell you, you reap what you sow. And I believe this is a last day because David, the way he dealt with Saul is the same way that God eventually dealt with him. The way he handled Saul when Saul was in hot pursuit of him, this is the same thing that God did to him. That's what Jesus said. Jesus said, blessed are those that are merciful for they shall obtain mercy. Jesus said, whenever somebody slap you on one side, he said, turn the other cheek. He said, don't retaliate. Don't respond but let it go oh somebody say let it go oh because you reap what you sow one day you're gonna be on the other side one day you're gonna be the one that's gonna need mercy one day you're gonna be to the point that where somebody you didn't see somebody and here you got to know that oh i didn't see you oh i didn't mean to say that i didn't mean to offend you you're gonna want somebody to have mercy on you so we got to learn to have mercy on others oh come on here somebody put your hands together and give god some praise up in here I'm getting ready to roll up out of here. I feel something pushing me. I try to tell you that this is, that this is David's last dance. This is his last dance with Saul. And I believe that this is his last dance because he understood you got to reap what you sow. Is there anybody in here that whenever you were sitting across from your child and they said something to you and you didn't let them know what you said to yourself. You know, that's the same thing I said to my mom. That's the same way I responded to my daddy. That's the same lie I told. That's the same thing I did. You know why? Because you reap. You reap what you sow. I heard. I heard Paul say. He said, be not deceived. God is not mocked. He said, whatever man sow, that will he also reap. I know that's not a shouting verse. I know that's not a dancing verse. But you ought to be mindful. You ought to be cognizant of that verse because it'll teach you how to deal with people and I'm going to give you mercy because I know I need mercy I heard I heard blind Bartimaeus say he say Jesus he say have mercy on me I need your mercy I don't need you to give me what I deserve I need you to give me what I don't deserve I don't need you to handle me what I need see there's somebody in your life right now they're looking for you to be mad there's somebody in your life right now they are looking for you to cut them off there's somebody in your life right now they are looking for you to respond the way you responded the last time but you got to learn you got to reap what you sow so I'm gonna let them go it was later on in David's life that the Bible says that his own son by the name of Absalom he stole the hearts of the people and because David handled Saul right I believe when Absalom was got the drop on David that God remembered he remembered the mercy that David had on Saul and have mercy on David I heard good God I said I heard I heard Psalm 41 say look what David wrote when he was in pursuit when Absalom was trying to kill him look he said I have waited I waited patiently for the Lord he inclined to hear me and he heard my cry he said he drew me up from the pit of destruction and out of the miry bar and set my feet upon a rock making my steps secure y'all miss it. Come on here Facebook. Come on here YouTube. I'm trying to tell you that when you when you have mercy on somebody God one day he'll let God God one day he'll pull you 
out of the pit. He'll pull you from when somebody got to drop on you. He'll have mercy on you. I don't know about you, but I'm so glad. I'm glad that what Jeremiah said. Jeremiah said this. I recall to my mind. He said, therefore, I have hope. He said, it is of the Lord. It's of the Lord's mercy that we have not been consumed. Can I tell you, that's the only reason that you're not dead right now. It's because of God's mercy. Can I tell you, that's the only reason that you have not od Because of God's mercy, that's the only reason why that bullet didn't get you. Because it was God's mercy. That's the only reason why you're yet still alive. Because of God's mercy. I don't know about you. I need God's grace. I need God's mercy. And I want this to be my last dance. I don't want to deal with Saul no more. I don't want to deal with his insecurity no more. I don't want to deal with his jealousy no more. But I'm getting ready to move up. I'm moving up a little higher. I heard. I heard David say when David was running from his enemy. That's why he said in Psalm 27, he said, the Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? He said, the Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? He said, when the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, when they come upon me to consume me, to eat up my flesh, the Bible said they stumble, they stumble and they fall. Is there anybody right now know that the only reason why your enemies stumble is because how you dealt with that other person. The only reason why they didn't take you out is because how you dealt with that other individual I heard I heard David say I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living I gotta let y'all go but can I take this as my confidence I'm gonna receive the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living that I didn't hang it over their head I'm gonna receive the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living because I didn't take advantage of them I'm gonna receive the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living I could have walked away. I could have dogged them out. I could have pressed sin, but I'm going to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of living. I heard, I heard David say, wait on the Lord. You want to know how to get the victory over your enemy? Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. And I feel my granddaddy, an old Baptist preacher, he will. He'll strengthen your heart. I say, wait. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. He'll give you the strength you need. It's my last one. But I heard, I heard Isaiah say, he say, wait. But they that wait upon the Lord, he'll renew their strength. He'll mount you up with wings like an eagle. You ought to look down your couch. You ought to look down your row. You ought to look across your kitchen and say, neighbor, every now and then, you got to drop down and get your eagle on. He's going to mount me up with wings like an eagle. I'm going to be able to run and not be weary. I'm going to keep on walking and I won't faint because the hand of the Lord is on my life. It's the last dance, the last waltz, the last move. This is the last one. My last move is not my last move because the hand of the Lord is on my life. You ought to give him some praise right there. David said that the enemy is coming against me, but I'm going to sing a new song. I'm going to let y'all go. He said in verse 3 of chapter 40, he said, I'm going to sing a new song. Come on here, somebody. The Lord trying to give you another anointing. He's trying to give you a fresh anointing. He's trying to breathe on you again. He's trying to touch you again. What the enemy meant for evil, the Lord going to give you another grace, another level of his anointing. The way I didn't go through for nothing, but no, I went through to get to. Because I'm getting ready to sing praises unto the Lord. I'm getting ready to sing and exercise joy and say, Lord, you didn't bring me this far to leave me here. I got to stop. Come on, give him some praise. Some glory.
I come to encourage somebody that day. Whether it be jealousy, envy, whether it be an enemy, you can get so mature in your walk with God that you can decree and declare, this is my last dance with this. There's always going to be trouble. There's always going to be an antagonist. But it doesn't have to pull at you the way that it always pulls at you. You don't have to lose every time. It doesn't have to keep you up at night. It doesn't have to stress you out. It doesn't have to take your joy, steal your peace. No, no, no. He said, this is my last dance. Is there anybody right now that have some trouble with their relationships? Is there anybody right now having trouble with your spouse, your children, your friends, church, family, persons on your job, people? You got your last name. You can decree and declare today. When you handle them right and you do what's required of you of the Lord, you ought to say, man, you don't got to keep wrestling with this. You don't got to keep fighting with this. People are always going to have something to say. But you don't have to respond. Just because they sin for you, you don't have to come. But I want to encourage you and let you know it's going to be your last dance. And don't just keep it on relationships because there's somebody right now struggling with some type of substance. You're struggling with some type of act. You're struggling with some type of thing that you would engage in and get involved in. But God told me to tell you. If you do this right, this could be your last dance with that. Will anybody be bold with me? Will anybody be courageous with me? And say, there's some things in my life I'm not going to deal with no more. Anybody going to be bold with me? I'm going to decree and declare that. He's not going to get me with that anymore. This is the last dance. This is it. And the good news is you can go out like Jordan. You can go out with a win. You go out with a, with a rain. On behalf of everyone here at Truth and Love Ministries, we want to thank you for being a part of our online worship experience. Thank you for your participation through your likes, your shares, and your comments. But we also want you to participate when it comes down to helping us continue to push this gospel message forward. You can do so by downloading our app, and you can give there in a safe and secure way. You can go to our website at truthandlove.tv, and you can give. Or you can text the word T-I-L Jax to the number 77977. Thank you so much for your generosity. Thanks for watching. Be blessed. See you next time.